Dr. Roger Lear is a surgeon from California who has the only known solid physical evidence to prove the existence of ETs. He has removed a total of nine implants from eight different patients, all claiming to be victims of the UFO abduction phenomenon. These were tested at Los Alamos Labs and New Mexico Tech and found to contain rare isotopic ratios only found in a very small percentage of meteorites, more like crashed alien-made machines. Before we get into the more advanced alien technology, I'm just going to go over some basics on binary number systems, logic gates, and Boolean algebra so that you can understand how regular computer chips work first before I show you how to make them smaller and faster than you ever before thought possible. We'll start with the decimal system, which means 10 based system. Deci means 10. A decagon has 10 sides. What this means is that we have 10 numbers, and when we run out of numbers, we go back to 0 again and carry the 1 over to the next decimal place. These aren't really numbers, they are just symbols which represent numbers. After all, a number is abstract, it doesn't mean anything by itself. 3. 3 of what? 3. A number by itself it means nothing unless it's describing a unit where the units could be three apples or three feet or you know you get the idea three miles per hour the binary number system by meaning two like bicycle is a system of counting based on only two symbols represents represented by numbers one and zero in this system we count to one and we've run out of symbols so we have to go back to zero and carry the one over to the next decimal place the first computers were built using a series of logic gates which would switch to on or off, true or false, zero or one. And they built, there are basically four types of logic gates which correspond to the four basic number operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Uh, I highly suggest reading a book or an on or taking a class in digital electronics or electrical engineering if you really want to learn this stuff. Here's a diagram showing how to build logic gates using a frequency modulated photonic signal processor. We're using these quasi crystalline photonic circuits. I also suggest that you read up as much as you can on fiber optics. There are some people who think that both fiber optics and the transistor were both back engineered from alien technology. The transistor was invented in December of 1947, five months after Roswell. But anyways, I don't think the transistor was reverse engineered by, from alien technology because the three men who designed it were all studying theoretical solid state physics that were directly related to the fundamental un underlying principles behind how a PNP transistor would function. I also think it's quite plausible that fiber optic cables would have been invented through the genuine ingenuity and foresight predicted to use uh, photons as signal carriers through a refractive medium index. And their eventual total replacement of modern microprocessor technology, although at the time there existed no method of nanoengineering which could come anywhere close to producing circuits this small. Photonic circuits must be constructed atom by atom. This type of technology doesn't even really exist today, although it could. It's just cutting edge. It's cutting edge. It's coming out right now. MIT has a tractor beam they've developed which can pick up and move atoms one at a time. It basically uses a specifically tuned and polarized electromagnetic wave which traps and cools atoms allowing them to be moved by the laser. It does this by using a frequency slightly below the first electron orbit energy level of the atom, stimulating a photonic spontaneous emission of the photon. Since the atom must release a photon of a slightly higher energy than the one it was just hit by, because the, as it needs to release a minimum photon energy. That's how you can tell what atoms are by the spectrum, by, by spectrometer, by looking what type of, which frequencies of of light that they emit. They have to emit a light of a certain energy, a certain frequency. So when it, it has to emit and it doesn't have the energy for it, the energy comes from somewhere so it cools down the atom. It takes out of the internal kinetic energy, slowing it down, cooling it. Um, a separate laser tuned to a different frequency, slightly higher than the first electron orbit, will conversely heat the atom. So you can heat them up, put them into place, you know, and cool them down so that they you can mold, the, mold a crystal or a structure one atom at a time for absolute precision. Heat is used to break and re-solidify chemical bonds in order to form like solids. You, you can use two lasers combined to heat and cool and move atoms around. We can literally perform nano construction, although the process of building something one atom at a time would take forever. 
That is why the alien nano construction facility would need to have hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of these tiny lasers going all at once. Picture a giant football stadium where the entire dome over the top was covered in tiny laser heads which were all pointing down onto an object smaller than a flea at the center of the 50 yard line. This is the type of nano engineering facility I'm talking about. It would produce a it would take a week or maybe even months to produce a single giant craft of you know, standard size for four passengers, like a spaceship. The process would be to create an environment with the correct pressures and temperature to allow crystal formation and then use laser assistance to actually build the crystals and, and aid in their formation and construction. The more beams, the faster the construction can take place, so photonic quasi-crystals need to be manufactured using this type of precise laser placement of atoms in order to build the nanostructure of the actual circuit itself. Now, many of these circuits are built using metamaterials for the signal transmission lines. Metamaterials are for the, for the uh, axioms, the dendrites, with the signal signal carriers. The metamaterials have a negative refractive index which allows certain frequencies of light to pass through them at superluminal speeds. So you have literally faster than light computing. It would, it would just be insanely, insanely quick. Human scientists are only just beginning to unlock these secrets and be able to replicate this technology. It's still about 20 years off. But once fully developed, this technology will make computer chips 100 times smaller than the smallest chips as of the date of posting this video and allow them to run off the ambient electromagnetic energy that permeates through all space and time. This is truly remarkable. Don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe to my channel. Questions, comments, you know what to do.